Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike Eric Game from Scratch. And today we're talking about the recently released Unity 2020.2 beta. Now, this was actually released a few days back. Sorry, I'm a little behind on this one. I missed it. So that was released on September the 14th, which I think would have been Monday. Uh, again, I missed this one in timing, so we're hearing about it a couple days late. But this is actually significant because Unity is not going to be releasing as many versions as they used to in the past. And beta versions are a bit more of a view as to what to expect coming forward. And there's some really nice stuff in this actual beta, especially behind the the scenes quality of life things, but I'm going to start things off with a rant instead. So uh, one of the features of this release, one of the things I really wanted to showcase is a new feature and function. Now, don't worry, I'm going to come back to this in general, but one of the aspects of this release was in the new artist tools, there is a new shader graph and they've reorganized how things are ultimately going to work. It's actually a nice improvement. Instead of having this one monolithic output, we now have the output stack. So here you can see the vertex and fragment stack and result. That's awesome. This is the end result of the new shader graph. I like this improvement. It is definitely a change. And I also like the UI and experience better. So I wanted to check this out right away. And that's where my rant starts to come in. Now, this is a beta release about beta features. So that means they should be just kind of enabling the new stuff. And a lot of things in the world of Unity have switched to a package approach. So here you can see in Unity, I have created a universal render pipeline project, and I want to check out the new VFX graph. And this is when I talk about the new fragility of Unity. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because a lot of the nice stuff that's come out there is in package format. The fact that the engine is getting more modular is a great thing, but the way they've implemented it, not so great. So here I am. I want to check out the new VFX graph. So I came in here. I go, ahead. okay, I'm going to go ahead and create a new VFX shader. So come in here, shaders, and I want to go ahead and create one. So here are my options. Now let's go in over to the instructions. So here we go on instructions on creating a new graph, blank shader graph and subgraph are always going to be available. But if you're using the universal render pipeline, I want to use the universal lit shader. Okay, I'll follow those instructions. So I do a right click, create, shader. Hey, wait a minute. There's there's no universal shader. And those two things that they said here are, are not available. Subgraph is, but the other one is not here. So what's going on here? Well, this is this is the Unity's modular nature. So if you want to check out the new features of Unity 2020.2 beta, you're going to have to come into the package manager. This is nothing new. It is getting more and more modular. So now what you're going to want to do is come into settings, advanced settings, and turn on enable preview packages. Now, again, this is a beta release. This is all about previewing. So I think all of this stuff should come pre configured out of the box. Use the newest version of VFX, use the newest version of the URP, and so on and so forth. All right, so now we've got it there enabled. I can come here, we'll go to the registry, and now what I want to do is find VFX graph. Wait a minute, shader graph. Sorry, my bad. Shader. All right, so I'm going to type in here shader. There is shader graph. You notice we have 8.10 installed, and they're talking about 10.0. Now, I don't know when we did this giant jump up to 10, by the way, but here you go ahead, see all versions. You can find it is available. That is excellent. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll do that upgrade. This is going to do its magic, install it, download it, and all that stuff. Uh, you're not going to want to wait for this, so let's do the update. I will pause and be right back. Okay, so that is done. I have the new VFX graph, shader graph stuff in. Sorry, VFX graph was also updated, but I'm talking about shader graph here. I've got the newest one. We are good to go. Awesome. Let's go check that out now. So right here, create shader. Hey, wait a minute here. Where... Where's my graph? Okay, I'll just create one of these instead. Let's open that up. Oh, what the heck? Uh, it's just broken. I can't open a shader at all. That's not good. Okay, I'm really confused now. Let's go into the Google land. Oh, look, we've got errors. Great. All right. Uh, something's wrong. Now, of course, when you add a new package in the world of Unity, the number one thing you're going to want to do is restart. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I will pause. Be right back. Okay, we are back. Excellent. So you see up here, we now have preview packages in use. We are good to go. Let's go ahead and create us a shader. So we go here, create shader. Uh, uh, oh, blank shows up now. That's good. Where's my universe? Okay, let's try and create a blank one. Let's load that up. All right, so what are we going to get here? Well, the good news is, we have output here. We have what we need here. The problem is we're not going to be able to use anything yet because we also need to install the UWRP, which is also in beta. So let's head on back over here. Let's go to the package manager. There's nothing to say. So, so far we've seen it completely broke my ability to open shaders unless I reopened it and the shaders don't effectively work unless I come in here and go universal. Now, if these things are dependent on each other, why is it going to be from 8.10 and I need to manually upgrade that package as well up to 10.0 just 
do it. If I say I want to go to 10.0 or the newest packages, whatever, just do it. Or even more importantly, frankly, again, this is a beta release. Turn this stuff on. Show us all of the beta features configured out of the box. So once you do this process, by the way, restart one more time. Ultimately, we do end up here and we do end up with a tool that works and a tool that is definitely an improvement. I do like where they went with the shader graph rant aside. So they've got to get this fragility down. And if you're going to release a beta with new features, enable those features out of the box or at the very, very least, please, please just put instructions right in the release notes because people are coming in here going, okay, why does, why does my screen not look at all like this? Why is this menu option completely missing? Well, that's because your versions don't match. And this, this mix and match hell that unity is creating is not uh, a great thing. So anyways, Rant aside, let's take a look at what is actually new in the 2020 release. And there's some, as I mentioned right off the hop, there's some really nice stuff here and it's behind the scenes for the programmer in a lot of cases. So, um, Roslyn uh, reference assemblies and compilation to avoid unnecessary recompilation. Roslyn being the, I believe it was the open source C Sharp uh, compiler from um, uh, Microsoft originally. Uh, on the topic of C Sharp, we've also got C Sharp 8 support in 2020.2, which is definitely nice. I'm so used to C Sharp 4.5 that we were stuck at for like five years. It's nice to see we've moved beyond that. Um, IL to CPP improvements there. It won't generate things unless stuff actually changes and the compilation process is faster. Delta time is better across all different platforms, more reliable. Another one that's really nice goes along with my little rant there. If you do have breakages, so when you load a project and something breaks, there is now a new safe mode, which should help you troubleshoot what your problems actually are. And you can exit out of safe mode after the fact. That is definitely a godsend, especially until they get this uh, tool chain fragility under control. Uh, we got some improvements in the profiling side of things. Uh, we've got uh, editor workflow. This is nice. Uh, it's a localization package. You're going to see this as a commonality, what they've done here in the package manager. And this is something they added somewhat recently. By the way, if you weren't paying attention to the channel, you may also notice dark mode is available. Yep. Every version of Unity past the current LTS version 2019 point, I think it is three, uh, has dark mode as an option, which is definitely a sweet thing for many people. But you come up here, you go Windows, and you go to package manager, you will now find you can actually also add packages over here, click the little plus sign from Git. And what we're going to find is a lot of the new packages they have here, you actually just enter a URL. So if you want to check out the new localization tools, which are cool, it gives you the ability to localize your UI work for multiple different environments, different languages, etc. You can add that using com.unity.localization git URL. Um, we've got a couple of other things like that as well. So uh, that's definitely nice. Uh, some, some minor improvements across the board that we can see here. Quick search too got some improvements as well. So searching is no longer limited to the open scene. It's now possible to search through all scenes and prefabs in your project at once. That is definitely an improvement there. Uh, a lot of quality of life improvements throughout the editor. Smaller stuff we're not going to really get into in details here. As I mentioned earlier on, artist tools improvements. We have jumped to 10.0, which is insane because this stuff just got production ready. Uh, but Shader Graph 10.0, as we saw, now has the master stack output as, a, as opposed to a single monolithic um, endpoint. You saw how to set it up. Uh, VFX Graph also got some changes and improvements here. Um, so... The nicest one being the addition of output events that allows you to synchronize lights, sound, physical reactions, or even into your own code via spawn events and delegates into C-sharp. Uh, so that's going to really give you a lot of options of what you can do with your VFX graph stuff. Uh, we've got also the UI builder and UI toolkit. This is available again. You use it via a Git URL at com.unity.ui, including a UI builder as a preview package. So if you're building your UIs here, you've actually got tooling in place for you know placing things and styling things. Definitely a nice extension to see there. We've got improvements to the scriptable render pipelines, both of them, the ERP and the HDRP. In the ERP or universal render pipeline, they're bringing it closer in parity to um, the HDRP in that we now have screen space ambient occlusion or SSAO. Uh, we've also got, uh, let's see, URP lit shaders, how have the ability to uh, surface input such as detail, detail normal. Plus we've got URP now supporting clear coat maps. If you're going to do something like uh, car paint, that kind of effect, you could do those things now in the ERP as well as the HDRP. Uh, HDRP also got some improvements, mostly around the area of lighting. Uh, a new decal layers uh, feature allows you to specify which decal 
decals, not decals, decals. There's a reason behind that saying, by the way. Uh, affect uh, which materials on a layer by layer basis. Path tracing supports fog absorption and subsurface scattering. Uh, so some improvements definitely to the HDRP. We've got improvements in the 2D tooling side of things, streamlined menus. So your 2D menus uh, now have much cleaner uh, breakdown. We've also got some nice uh, 2D default assets, including new 2D, 2D game objects were represented by small pixel sprites that users had to change to make game objects usable. Now you can pick from among a variety of 2D game objects with primitive shapes that will also match their collider 2D shapes. Uh, that's kind of nice. So you got to get a little bit more of a default. So you see nine slice capsule, uh, circle, hexagon, another hexagon, uh, isometric, square, and so on. Uh, tile map extras preview package is also now available. This one is not via a Git URL, by the way. Uh, gives you easier access to the tools while we consolidate new changes in the packages. Some of the features in this package are animated tiles, rule tiles for tile maps, and so on. Definitely nice to see more and more 2D love in these releases, especially from the 2D side of things. From the platform side of things, no major new platforms, but one of the major things that's happened in the world of uh, computing in general is Apple is moving all of their laptops eventually to ARM processors. And with Unity 2020.2, uh, you can now target uh, that uh, new silicon, so the new ARM chips for uh, new Mac builds for the six people that are still bothering to build for Mac these days. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the gist of it. Of course, I, I will link to the release notes if you want to go into a bit more detail. Uh, I Sorry, I started this actually off with a bit of a rant, but I have to say, this I wanted to get in and just check this stuff out. And I know what I'm doing. I know my way around these tools. And to go through like 20 minutes of screwing around to just get to the point where I can test new stuff in something that is a beta release to start with, that is just so frustrating. Especially because if there is a dependency between two two things, just give me say... Let me update to the 10.0 version of everything great and just do it. Or better yet, it's a beta build. Ship with the new stuff enabled. Or if it's not enabled at the very, very, very minimum, put that in bold in the documentation so people don't waste their time like I did. So I like, I really like the fact that Unity is going towards this modular approach to development. You can streamline things. You can have uh, lighter weight installs. You can have uh, different teams working on different projects. It is ultimately a good thing, but you guys are going to have to manage it better than this. At least that is my opinion, but I would love to hear yours down below. So anyways, we've got... Um, Unity 2020.2 beta, what do you think? Definitely nice to see C Sharp 8 in there. I like the new localization tools. I like the new UI manager. I do like this uh, set up for uh, the shaders. I like the VFX, the ability to hook into custom code, etc. So there's a lot of great stuff here. Let's just work a little bit on the execution. And of course, dark mode. If you didn't already know about that, you're going to love that one. So we do have dark mode in all versions of Unity now, including, as you can see, this one. So let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later.